Hello, today we're going to talk about piecewise functions. Alright, so piecewise functions are exactly what it sounds like. We've got pieces of a function. Okay, well hopefully you remember that a function must pass the vertical line test. So here, nothing overlaps. Okay, and I know what you're thinking. Well, what happens right there, Miss Cross? Okay, well right here we've got a solid dot let me move this All right, here we've got a solid dot which is um, an exact point and an open circle means that my line is approaching there but it doesn't actually hit it okay it's kinda like infinity I can get to what is that negative three so I can get to negative three point zero 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 one but I won't get to negative three once I'm at negative three I'm down at this line okay now since it's a function we can break it up based on the x values because a function has different x values for every point okay so we've got our let's start with purple we've got a purple line right here so your purple goes from let me write this down purple line or your left line I guess <laughs> would go from negative 6 to negative 3 and it will touch negative 6 but not negative 3 all right here the blue line were in the middle okay that goes from negative 3 to 4 so again it touches negative 3 but not at positive 4 and we always go from smaller number to bigger number then we have our right line all right our green line has a domain from 4 to 8 all right so that's how we describe the three different equations right we're defining it by the domain okay so let's do an example all right, typically they're given as inequalities. All right, already given it in simplified form, so it's always x is less than or equal to something. You know, it's always got that variable by itself. So I like to color code things. So I'm going to start with the top equation. So how I rewrite this is f of x must equal negative x. Okay, so y equals negative x. All right, but that only happens when x must be less than or equal to 2. So if I were to make a graph of this, I'm sorry, a table, a t-chart, all right, we could only plug in x values from 2 and lower. Okay. So if I plug in 2 into my equation, negative 2, plug in 1, I get negative 1, plug in 0, well, negative 0 is just 0, plug in negative 1, I get positive 1, plug in negative 2, we're seeing a pattern, okay, and we know that's going to keep going. But I'm not going to go greater than 2. So let's look at my graph. We're going to plug in 2, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, okay? And as you can see, I've got a pattern going, and so I'm going to just continue it all the way to the edge of my graph, because I know it's going to keep going on towards negative infinity. But the right-hand side has to stop at 2. So yeah, 
I could be terrible at drawing a line, but as long as my points are in the exact spot, Miss Cross, me, is gonna know I did it right. You did it right. Whatever. <laughs> All right, so that's the first part. So now there's a second line. So we do f of x must equal the second equation, x. So y equals x only when x is greater than two. So if I make a table here, I can plug in numbers that are bigger than two. Okay, so when I plug them in, well, I get just the y. So when I plug them into my equation, I just get the same thing. And that can keep going, again, forever in the positive infinity direction. But think about where it stops. Or I'm sorry, where it started, really x is to be greater than 2. Well, does that mean it starts at 3? Can it be a decimal? Can it be somewhere in between it? Can it be 2.0000001? So, really, it can get close to when it's at 2, all right? But it's not going to be at it. So, it's going to be an open circle. So, when you have it not equal to, that's an open circle at that value. So here when I plug in 2, I get 2. So when I graph it, 2 comma 2, I'm going to put an open circle. And then 3 comma 3, 4 comma 4, 5 comma 5, and connect those just like this. All right. Now I've got two lines here and two lines on my graph. Okay, again I know it's a function because it passes the vertical line test. All right, let's do a whole bunch of them. Okay, so again I'm going to start with the red one. So my line is going to be y equals 2, but only when x is bigger than negative 3. So, when I start at negative 3, it's an open circle. And I do everything larger than it. So, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Notice I keep going towards infinity. We plug that into our equation. Oh, look at that. All my y values are 2, because x is not affecting my equation. So, we plug those into our graph. So negative 3 comma 2. Oh, what did I just do? I need an open circle. I hated that. Okay, sorry, I know, I'm perfectionist. Okay, and then negative 2, 2. Negative 1, 2, 0, 2. All right, notice we have y equals 2. Oh yeah, that's a horizontal line. All right, also, if I notice how to graph that, I can use that to help me. Okay, that's a horizontal line. So I did everywhere where x is bigger than negative 3. Now let's do the bottom one. That's y equals negative 5 everywhere where x is smaller than negative 3. So when, again, we've got a horizontal line. All right, so we're going to have it at negative 5. So at negative 3, negative 5, because the y value is negative 5. Oh, well, what did I just do? Does it equal negative 3? No. So sometimes it helps to see the table. So at negative 3, it's an open circle. Smaller than it is going to be fine. So that was just hard to see that arrow. So here, we have negative 3, negative 5, and I should have made that an open circle. And then we do a horizontal line going towards the left. And there you have it. All right. 
now we have three lines so we're going to have three equations so I'll start with the top one y equals negative x minus 4 so everywhere where x is less than negative 2 so we plug things in everything smaller than negative 2 so open circle there going that way so we plug in negative 2 and we should get negative 2 plug in negative 3 negative 1 negative 4 0 so negative 2 negative 2 negative 3 negative 1 negative 4 0 and it's going to continue in that direction and that makes sense because it's a negative slope negative 1 slope and there we go and again I can make my points so I can make it look better <laughs> more exact second equation y equals negative 1 half x so here I can only plug in values from negative 2 to 2 so think about your table x has to be the smallest it can be is negative 2 exactly and then the biggest it can be is 2 so I can plug in everything in between so only these values I mean I can plug in decimals if I really wanted to All right so if I plug these in uh, negative 2 I get 1 this one's kinda gross so it's 1 half but if I'm graphing I'd rather do decimals 0, negative 0.5, and negative 1. So at negative 2, 1, negative 1.5, 1 0, 0, 1, negative 0.5, and 2, negative 1. And here, it's like a segment, or it is a segment, don't know why I said like, and that's what we have here. It's going from negative 2 to 2. Okay, it's blocking that in. All right, and let's do the third one. We get y equals negative 1. So hopefully we realize that is a horizontal line. Okay, so that's everywhere where x is greater than 2. So at 2 comma negative 1, we have an open circle. Okay, well we have an open circle on top of a closed circle doesn't matter they're both at that point okay so there's a point there doesn't matter um, I mean here it's just by coincidence that it happened to be the same okay so we leave it filled in and then we continue a horizontal line at negative 1 and that's going to go forever towards infinity Okay, so here it just wanted to connect it, all right, like to kind of make a continuous line. All right, let's do number four, but what I'm going to call number five for whatever reason. And I'm going to start with the first one. Y equals negative X plus two. We start at our table when x is less than or equal to 0. So it's going to be at 0 and everything smaller towards negative infinity. So when I plug in 0 I get 2, plug in negative 1, plug in negative 2, plug in negative 3. So you, you get to see a pattern pretty quickly hopefully. And we can graph it. So 0, 2, negative 1, 3, all right, and as we can see, our slope is negative 1, and that's what we had over here, the slope is negative 1, all right, so let's do the second equation, we get y equals 1 half x plus 3. Again, sometimes it's just nice to have that table. Everything bigger than 0. 
Okay, anything sticking out about this? Oh yeah, at zero, it's an open circle. Okay, don't make that solid there. So when I plug in zero and get three, so zero comma three, open circle. Okay, don't forget that when it doesn't equal. We plug in one, uh, it's kind of gross, but I'll leave it as a decimal. Plug in two, plug in three. All right, that keeps on going. So at one, 3.5, two comma four. Really, I just like to get a couple points because that helps me identify if I did anything wrong. Okay, if I only graph two points and I get my slope and I'm done, well, what if I plugged in something incorrectly? Right, what if I got a, the wrong Y value? Okay, that would stink to have to redo everything. Okay, so just watch out for things like that. Okay, so let's do the last one. Okay, so this one looks a little weird, I know, but trust me, we can think it through. We get y equals x plus 2. So that is only when x equals 2. So if I think about a table, well, the only value I can plug in is 2. If I plug in 2 for x, I get 4. I keep doing it. I still get 4. There's nothing else I can do. x can only be 2. I'm restricted. So 2 comma 4. Okay, now let's do the bottom one. So we get y equals negative one half x plus four. That's everywhere where x doesn't equal two. So when I plug in my values, I can plug in zero, I can plug in one. I'm going to skip two and go to three and four. But again, think about it. Can I plug in 1.5? Yes. Can I plug in 3, I'm sorry, 2.22222? Yes. So I can plug in everything close to 2, just not 2. So it's not going to equal 2, so I'm going to leave a hole there. So let's plug in these values. So if I plug in 0, I get 4. If I plug in 2, that's a lot nicer. So I get 3 and I plug in 4, I get, not thinking straight, sorry, 2. So I can do it that way, but if I make mistakes plugging stuff in, I would go ahead and plug in 1 and just get decimals. So I get here, I get 3.5, and for 3, I get 2.5. So when I graph it, so 0, 4, 1 comma 3.5, 2 comma 3 is my open circle, and 3, 2.5, and 4 comma 2. All right, so that's perfect because I left an open circle there. I can continue my graph that way and that way. Okay, you can just use a straight edge like a ruler or the edge of a paper. That's fine to continue that out. So I've got enough points to see what's happening. So here I've got almost a continuous function until I get to x equals 2, and then I take like a little jump. I hop up here and then hop back down. Okay? All right, hopefully that makes sense. If not, I'm in my classroom. <laughs>